And good afternoon. My name is Gene Clancy from the International Action Center. And we're here today, a number of anti-war activists and organizations and their supporters to oppose what seems to be an increasingly virulent war drive by the United States um, around the world, but particularly in uh, four areas, which is in North Korea, also the, which is called the DPRK, Democratic Republic of uh, Korea, and um, in Venezuela, in the Middle East, and particularly Syria, and also the murderous war in Yemen, which is being conducted by Saudi Arabia with the, with the support and participation of the United States. And more recently, in fact, just last night, a new, uh, a new kind of aggression so to, is, is being announced in Afghanistan. Now, we have people who will um, be able to talk and answer questions and be able to discuss those areas and other areas too if they, if they should arise. Um, uh, I'm going to I ask each one of the, of the participating organizations and individuals to um, uh, say a few words and, and say it about the U.S. aggression in their area. Um, first, I'm going to call on Lydia Bayonetta, who is a longtime organizer of the International Action Center and, and community organizer in the Rochester area. And she's going to uh, talk about the recent events in Korea, where it is a dire situation. Thank you. Um, this past month, you know, has seen increasing tensions around the world because of the real threat of nuclear war on the Korean Peninsula. This is especially dangerous for the people of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Now, both Republicans and Democrats have both pursued a pro-war, hostile policy towards Korea. The Trump presidency, however, has personally shown a complete disregard for any diplomatic niceties and in a gangster-like fashion have declared to the Korean people that they will experience the fire and fury, the likes of which the world has never seen. This is really very, very serious. The backdrop of this, too, is that the House, the U.S. House of Representatives, both the Republicans and Democrats, voted 344 to 81, and in the Senate, 90 to, 98 to 2, to approve the largest military appropriation in the history of the United States, or for that matter, the history of the world. The National Defense Authorization Act would allocate $696 billion for the defense, and I put quotation in defense, for the fiscal year 218, twice as much as the rest of the world combined. It is enormous. Meanwhile, spending on necessities that billions, millions of people here in the United States depend on. They need the programs that are being slashed to fund the defense contract, such as transportation, water supplies, electric grids, not to mention the railway, health care, especially their attempt to, the, you know, to destroy the Affordable Health Care Act. And we, in its place, being, besides doing that, we are trying to be bullied to another, to accept another war. Now, the threat of war, I think, 
has been real and constant in Korea. I mean, it just did not start a few days ago, although it was heightened by the Trump administration. The threat of war is constant in the Korean Peninsula, especially for the DPRK. In August of 1945, the Korean people finally won their liberation from Japanese colonialism. In the South, however, the United States moved in and, and, and it became a new occupation force. They did that a lot with their finaglings, not only with their military coming in, but they had called also the forces that were coming in which was the Soviet Union at, at that time, that, at, you know, and Kim Il-sung's military army. They called and they told them that we would like the people, the Japanese people in the South to surrender, not to your forces, but to the forces of the United States. And somehow that happened. So, the war ensued in 1950. That came the Korean War. It's a lot more things happened, but just to make things short, five million, five million pe Korean people perished in that war. In that short period of 1950 to 1953, and 55,000 American soldiers died as well. <coughs> Now, a lot of people don't know that the United States carried out the most concentrated bombing of any country at that time. Talking about three years. Three years. It's just tremendous bombing in that area. Not one, one building was left standing in Pyongyang. While the bombs were conventionals, they were conventionals, but the threat of nuclear war was made many times over by General Douglas MacArthur. In fact, he said, he boasted that in, in 1954, the New York Times reported, but they hid it. For some reason, that was just too much. He said that I could have won, this is General MacArthur said, I could have won the Korean War, he said, in three days, I would drop 30, to 50 atomic bombs and ringing around the area, especially a necklace around Manchuria. Now those are not word by word, but people can check them out. They, they, they thought that was such a provocative statement in the 60s that they even did not publish it until he died in April of 1974. So, so this is the only country in the world, the only country in the world to use an atomic bomb was the United States. And they incinerated over 270,000 civilians at the end of World War II. Both in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, there were also, because we are talking about Korea, there were also 30, <coughs> perhaps maybe 40,000 Korean workers that were enslaved, taken from Korea, brought to Japan because many of the people in Japan were forced to go into the military or drafted into the military to fight this war. And they took workers from Korea because that was their colony. They took them and they were imprisoned somewhere in the factories in Japan. And there were about 30 to 40,000 that was also killed in there. Right now, DPRK is threatened by hostile military activities called war games. And people just think about, oh yeah, well, it's a war game, you know? But these, these war games, you know, the, the Korean people have endured for years and years and years. And they're live, their ammunitions are live. And they're talking about, you know, maybe 30,000 to 40,000 U.S. troops and more, hundred thousands of South Korean troops. And they say right out that 
We're practicing how to destroy North Korea and how to have regime change in Korea. So war, we, we, we can't tell the North Koreans how horrid their own, what, what they experience. And they're, as a human being, they would be extremely afraid and they feel that they need to be able to develop a nuclear deterrence because that was the only thing that will keep them safe because they remember, they know what happened to Libya, they know what happened to Iran, they know what happened to Iraq, um, not Iran, but Iraq, Libya, and they know that they're in a the process right now where Judy's going to talk about Syria. And they know all this. And so uh, they're, they're, very, they're very much afraid, but they're resolved that nobody's going to be able to invade and destroy them. They want to be able to survive. Here is a country that has a history of being one country for thousands and thousands of years, then all of a sudden, in 1945, they got divided. DPRK has never been an occupying force anywhere in the world. Never. No one has, nor has it in, invaded any other country in the world. There are no Korean military installation or bases outside of its own country. You have to compare this with the 800 or 900 U.S. military bases around the world, including several right near the border of the DPRK. You know, so what we demand and what we would like to say to the people of the United States that our war is not with Korea. Our war is right here to provide for the millions and millions of people who are here who live in the United States. And that we want to say to lessen the tension in the Korean Peninsula and around the world that we ask the United States to sign a peace treaty to end the war because they never signed a peace treaty. It was just an armistice. That's it. The United States also must end, because they have control of this, their war games immediately, and especially the sanction against the Korean people. Now, I want to say about the sanctions, especially that has just been instituted by the United States, which also, by the way, the Russia and China. You know, this really heightens the tension, the war tension, in the peninsula itself, both in the north and the south, because this new president, and his name is Moon Ray in President Moon Ray in was actually thinking, making tremendous overtures to the north and say, let us talk and let us sign that no war, no military aggression should happen right in the borders. They can't talk about the sea. He has no control of that. But this man, he's a president of South Korea, has control. But when the, the sanctions came in, it almost heightened the whole war fever all over. And South Korea themselves have to really deal with also the United States military might. So that heightens everything. So basically, what we say here in an appeal to workers and people of the United States, that really what we need to fight for, we really need to fight against racism. We, what we need to fight for is for jobs. We need to fight for education. You know, we, we, we need to fight for um, health care and not for war and devastation. Thank you very much. We thank you. Um.